right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Sensei Victoria Whitfield, who is in New Jersey. How are you doing, Victoria? I am so well. It's a bit of a rainy day, but I'm excited to be here. <laughs> oh, a rainy day in New a rainy day in New Jersey, huh? That's probably not that uncommon, really, is it? Yeah, yeah, we get a lot of humidity. It's great, though, because like, it's a beautiful time of year. It's summertime, and it's like the energy coming from the inside out. I'm celebrating that. Yeah. Yeah. Summertime and the living is easy, huh? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, Sensei Victoria uh, is a business Reiki master for entrepreneurs, and she talks about loving yourself and loving your business at the same time. Are you working? Are you working yourself sick? And we're going to talk about being a visionary today. So, but before we get into that, uh, Victoria, let's just explore the concept of why do you think it is that people are working, you know, working themselves into ill health? Oh my gosh, there's, so workaholism is very real, right? We are rewarded for working hard. We have this definition of, a good person is a hard worker, right? And maybe we grew up um, as entrepreneurs under parents who might've been working class. I know I had mm -hmm. both of my parents um, were entrepreneurs, but also had real jobs, right? And at the same time, there's this misunderstanding that if you're going to be a good person, you have to be a hard worker, that if you are not working hard, that means you're slacking off. And what that can do, however, is that it gets us onto a bit of a slippery slope where that um, we have to work harder and harder in order to prove ourselves. And what I've seen with quite a few of my clients and myself included is that there's a certain point where you're working so hard that you've worked yourself into the hospital or into burnout, right? Or you're burning out your team because you just keep adding more and more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. And I love that. Uh, I I love that analogy there. And and I love the idea about the fact that you know you may be adding more and more and more and more people. And I think in one of your, in one of your writings, I mean, or, or speakings, you say that uh, yeah, you're doing great. You're you're making a lot of money for other people. You're making other people's lives better, at the expense of your own. Huh. And it's so much. Well, uh, I'll put it on me. I found yeah. in the on my own story that it's been so much easier to grow other people's businesses and other people's companies mm -hmm. rather than mine. I remember when I used to work in the medical field, I was a medical billing encoder. Um, right. And I took this one practice that I was working for from 75,000 a month, which is not bad, to 750,000 a month. So that's a tenant. Wow. It was an yeah two years. And so, okay, like I can focus on growing their systems and all it's working really hard. I had the team going and built it up. But when it came to my own business for the first initial years, I had to go through mindset shifts of, well, you know, I uh, like it's stickier receiving initially receiving the sales for myself. Uh, where it's easier to send right uh, the sales or the increase in income for others. And that was a bit of a mindset shift I had to uh, come through, right? And I help my clients with that as well. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's another great point. Because yeah, sometimes we feel uh, when we're doing it for another company, you know, we feel, oh, this is cool. But you're doing it for yourself, then you suddenly start to question, you know, and you get that horrible imposter syndrome, you know, kicks in and all that stuff. Like, you know, and can I really do this? Is, is it really, am I really good? My goodness, people are going to pay me. Am I, am I going to deliver the value? And, and, and most times, like the answer to that is absolutely look at your experience, look at the work you do, look at all of that. But we just have this voice. Yeah. Yeah. And that voice is there to try and protect you yeah. of, okay, you know, reinforce the old identity. So at least you have a sense of stability, but it's that old identity. Let's say that I used to have making 50,000 a year, but now uh, releasing that old identity that was protecting me, I now have $50,000 days. And yeah. it's a very different paradigm to be in. You know, we want to try and stay small and stay safe. 
right? And you've got to honor and release that. And that is a mindset and an energy shift. I could say like, all right, 10 steps till your breakthrough, or like, let me put you through my coaching program to, or dishing out lobotomies, but it's an energy, <laughs> an energy and mindset shift. This is something that you can't go under it. You can't go over it. You've got to go through it. Yeah. So here, so it's an interesting thing is that we we know a lot of these things intellectually, right? But it's a question of actually putting them into practice. But we live many different lives during our lives, right? And I think that's to what you were alluding to a moment ago. Sometimes, like we get stuck in a perception of ourselves from the past and we don't take a step back and look at well actually i have evolved i have developed my experiences have increased you know the things um the insights i have everything therefore you know i have evolved therefore i can expect more out of life but some people like i i think they think that they have to remain in whatever persona they they've existed in for the longest time and i would call that persona, the anti-visionary, right? Mm -hmm. Within every single one of us is an inner visionary, the one who's going to pull us forward, make a quantum leap in our life and businesses, someone who is there to shake up the industry. But the anti-visionary is the one who says, no, 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 just play it safe. Don't upset the apple cart, right? Don't make them mad. You're going to screw it up if you do that. Remember how you messed it up before, right? The anti-visionary is cautious um, and doing their best uh, to handle quality control. And we got to, like, he's hired too. Like, I've, yeah. I've hired my anti-visionary um, as well because quality control is really important. We want stability. And mm -hmm. at the same time, what's going to take you from your $50,000 a year to $50,000 days is a massive shift in consciousness. And that comes from listening to your inner visionary. And I would define an inner visionary as a mixture of two things in particular. I call it the feminine and the masculine side of being visionary. The feminine side Right. I mean, this energetically. I don't mean it as like, you know, uh, a woman and a man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I get it. Yeah. It's terrible that we have to put in these in these uh, caveats these days. But go on. <laughs> yeah. it, it is what it is. And uh, yeah. what someone was thinking otherwise, I want no man, no sure. woman left behind. And so exactly there's the feminine half I would call is your intuition, your gut sense, your instinct for increase. Every single one of us has an instinct for increase. And there's even a word for that. The instinct for increase is called entelechy. Um, that's spelled E-N-T-E-L-E-C-H-Y, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. So every single one of us has an instinct for increase, has an intuition, right? A gut feeling of this is my authentic life. This is not my authentic life and i would call that the the yin or the feminine side of our inner visionary and then there's the masculine or the yang right uh side of our inner visionary and that is actually i mean like the company role called the visionary the chief visionary officer mm -hmm. that person who sees where we're going think steve jobs steve jobs was the visionary of apple the role that he fulfilled is i'm going to see where we're going and yep. i'm going to put the heart and soul of the organization because of that we all know what to do because there's a compass heading up our ship of an organization and so when you take the feminine half and the masculine half right the the instinct for increase as well as the role the one who is deciding where we're going you put it together that is how you can really be visionary in your life but also in your business and industry yeah, no, that's that's fun. that's fascinating. Then how does how when you work with people, how do you help them overcome the anti visionary? Because let's face it, the negative voices or the safe voices, the ones there to protect us, etc., are very, very persuasive, right? Because it's a little bit scary to step beyond it. So how do you when you work with people, how do you help them overcome the the anti visionary and start to listen to the visionary? Yeah, yeah, I sneak attack them. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. 
And how I do it is with a little secret called strategic meditation. Mm -hmm. um, so as a Reiki master, right? I'm an energy healer. Anything I'm going yeah. to has to do with your your self-care your energy healing right your body and your mind your peace of mind um, and with that how we start to work through the anti-visionary is through something called strategic meditation and what do i mean when i say strategic meditation as opposed to regular meditation strategic meditation is meditation done first meditation done first right strategically to set up the meeting or to set up mm -hmm. the day or to set up um wh whatever you're going to set up the podcast right meditation done first and when you do it with intent of like i am showing up in my visionary i'm going to meditate ground and clear visualize purple whatever you're doing right in the meditation doesn't matter if you're walking if you're yogaing whatever your flavor of meditation is it doesn't matter but the the point is that it's done strategically to get you in state Tony Robbins will have you like chanting intonation, incantations and jumping up and down. And that's awesome to get yourself in state. This is just another way to get yourself in state and align your anti-visionary, right? And through a softer way of like, let me, let me relax him. Let me kind of soothe him. Let me infuse him with positive energy, whatever that means. It's a bit of a softer way to get your inner anti-visionary calmed down so that your inner visionary can step forward does that make sense oh, you're total, that makes total sense i just want to come back to the meditation piece for a moment because i think this is important for people because there's probably a lot of people you know watching and listening going yeah you know i've tried meditation i can't do it number one i can't sit cross-legged on the floor or i can't do this. but um, explain because you referenced it a moment ago there are many many different ways of meditating some like very very simple and easy ways for people but maybe explain that because I always think people go immediately to the yeah I can't do that I've tried that it doesn't work for me oh yeah oh yeah and in the words of Henry Ford uh, whether you say you can or you can't you're right so I'm not even <laughs> kind of like arguing like try to convince someone they can meditate but what I can offer is a definition of what is meditating yeah uh, because meditating in my book and I've been uh, teaching meditation online and offline in person uh, locally here I've done two tours right one of the United States and another of the world uh, leading meditations for entrepreneurs I've led so like oh my gosh thousands of meditations for thousands of entrepreneurs and what I can tell you is that meditation is this one thing it is practicing relaxed focus that's it mm -hmm. practicing relaxed focus can you be focused and relaxed at the same time meditation as in general has so many expressions of it like okay someone's gonna pretzel their legs until they're relaxed and focused yeah. whereas the next person is going to like be look like they are completely asleep but come right up out of that sleep and answer the question and know exactly what was going on and that was their version relax focus another person is going to be deadlifting weights and mm -hmm. so in the zone that they get into this relaxed focus like or another person could be you know knitting or gardening to a point of relaxed focus meditation is just practicing relaxed focus it's not yoga it's mm -hmm. not humming on a mountainside in the Himalayas. It's it's not standing on your head and chanting oh, lama, 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 lama. Mm -hmm. and, and and no like not to to um to look down on other cultures' expressions of it, but we tend to think that it's something impossible or over the top or um inaccessibly esoteric. Yeah, yeah. Every person needs to know what it's like to have a state of being relaxed and focused because you can really sustain your productivity if you have that state as a practiced state and that's why we practice and teach meditation strategically. yeah 
I know, no, I, I love that. And thank you for giving that explanation, because I think that will help help a lot of people because, yeah, I mean, most people have a very limited view of what meditation is. But to your point, I mean, it could be walking, right? Walking meditation is, is very powerful. Personally, I get my stuff through through martial arts and, and people may think that's a bit strange, but I tell you, um, I come out relaxed and focused uh, from from a, you know, a hard session and the stuff we do because, yeah, because I think it all comes down to your point about focus, because when you empty your mind of other things, and that's why martial arts works for me, because really it's not a good idea to be thinking of other things when somebody's about to kick you in the head. Um, <laughs> you want to be figuring out how to avoid that. But the point is, it's that, and I think this is where you're talking, it's that kind of focus that suddenly clears away everything. And afterwards, you, you know, you can think very logically and clearly about the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know one of the ways that works for me uh, for meditation is actually deadlifting. My whole yeah. body, I am watching all of the nerves and the muscles and of my body turn on and pay att paying attention to my posture. So all the stuff that I'm, I'm also a web coder. So all the things that I've been coding, it goes away. It's like I sweat mm -hmm. it out. But at the same time, the realizations that I get about my business or my life come with so much more clarity after i've gotten myself into that relaxed state that zone and you know what the science backs this up why yep. because it's not even about spiritual stuff okay i know i like i'm a woo, woo person fine and this is all about blood and oxygen right the more that you can do something that redistributes blood and oxygen throughout your body it infuses your brain with the nutrients that it needs to access the areas that are responsible for creative problem solving right visualization association connections making Whereas if you're just hunched over, crunched and trying to get things done, that actually biologically pulls blood away from those areas of the brain to protect you. So that's mm -hmm. really what we're working with here is using your tool, this body, this tool, this temple that you're in to its maximum potential as a human body, not as a machine. You are a human and not a machine. And the way that you optimize the human tool is you optimize its resources and systems through getting into a state of relaxed focus. Yeah. And, and the other part to uh, Victoria is so some people would say, wow, this all sounds great, but who who has time for this? You know, I'm so busy. I'm busier than I've ever been in my life. And I always like to counter that by asking the question, are you are you in fact busier than you've ever been or are you more distracted than you've ever been? Because you're because you've got devices, you've got social media, you've got all of these things piling in. And if you're honest with yourself and you did one of those old fashioned time and motion studies with the clipboard, right, you'd probably discover that you have got plenty of time for this stuff because you're filling it with other stuff that's not helping you. Mm. And I would add to that, like, that was so beautifully said, John, that was amazing. And what I would add is that busy is a choice. Yeah. Busy is a choice. I know, I, I know what that could sound like to someone who's, you haven't seen my schedule. You don't know how big my team is, et cetera. Listen, you know, I only have a team of 30 people. I don't, I don't know what it's like with a team of 300 or 3000. Okay. And busy is a choice the same way that easy is a choice you can just decide that i'm going to create time for what's meaningful to me when you decide however that you are not going to create time for what is meaningful to you that is when you become busy right it's a conscious choice to not create time it's not that there's not enough hours in the day you know what everyone has 24 hours in the day that's it we all got that the most successful people to the people that um according to others aren't successful but they may be enjoying them their lives whatever sure. so we all have 24 hours in a day but it's up to you as the individual to choose how you use them and you can decide to carve time for the things that matter to you or you can decide not to but don't blame busy for the stressed out feeling that you have, remember to take personal responsibility of like, aha, I noticed I chose to not create time for my workout today. I chose to not make time to play with my kids. I chose to not give my spouse a hug and a kiss today. I chose that. 
I chose that. It's not like, oh, I was so. La, 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 la. <laughs> I don't know about you, but my name is Victoria. It's not victim, right? Mm -hmm. So Victoria means victory, right? I am the one who is winning here. I am the one um, who is on top. I make the decisions. So I would encourage you to shift out of that victim mindset of, oh, I'm too busy, right? So you can let yourself off the hook and act like you're not the decision maker in your life and business. And I would encourage you to take that power back and say, you know what? I chose not to. And tomorrow, or today or now, I'm going to choose to make time for what matters to me. Yeah, no, that's great. Oh my goodness, you mentioned those two words, personal personal responsibility. And that's what it all boils down to at the end, because you're absolutely correct. All of these things are our choices. And and what I was I was thinking sometimes with people is, you know, they say, Oh, I want to do more, I want to be more successful and everything. But behind it, you wonder, okay. But you're to your point, but you're choosing not to do anything towards that. And you're outsourcing it all. You're saying, oh, well, it's, you know, it's not the right time. It's not blah, 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 all these other things outside. But you're never admitting to yourself that the reason why you haven't done it is because you've chosen not to do it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that is that's a horse pill. That's mm -hmm. that's a horse pill to swallow. It's not like a nice little job. <laughs> Size pill. Nope, nope, nope. That is one of those big, chalky, annoying pills. But when you swallow it, it's full of everything that you need, right? All of the nutrients necessary for you to heal the wounds that are perpetuating the problems that you're bemoaning right now. So be mm -hmm. kind to yourself, everyone. And I'm right there with you. This is work. This is what I mean, this is literally why I've dedicated my life to it. And this is why uh, I go so deep in the work with my clients is because, yes, this really is work to make that decision takes energy and a lot yeah. of it. No, absolutely. And I, and I think that the last thing just just to also just to, to highlight here is um, when you work with people, how many people do you think when you first engage with them are living lives that they think other people expect them? So they're they're living they're living the life they're doing the all of these things and they think it's because that's what's expected of me that's what's that's what I have to do to fulfill these expectations or whatever I'm doing, as opposed to what I really want to do. How often is that the case? I'm gonna Pareto's rule that eighty percent, eighty percent. It's it's um the dominant programming is to make other people happy. Right. Think about how how many years of schooling um, have most people had. Right. I would say most people have had between 12 to 20 years of schooling. And what happens in school ever since you're a kindergartner all the way up to postdoctoral? The one thing you got to do is get that A. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the level of value, your value of performance is externally defined by design. And that entrains people to then look externally to see, am I doing a good job? Are you happy, right? What's going to happen? Is my status going to increase or decrease based on the performance, right? The grade that I'm getting and how you do anything is how you do everything then. So if you have 20 years of programming that I matter when y'all or of them over there are happy i matter when other people are happy of course then 80 percent of people are going to come out here and be living according to what they think they should be doing there's just the 20 percent of us that are like Ooh, i think this i have i'm a little allergic to this it's giving me a rash like i feel like i want to go my own way we may be called crazy but in the words of steve jobs i would call that genius yeah no fantastic beautifully put victoria and, and i think um, inspirational for people so listen all victoria's information is going to be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about you and your work absolutely so sensei victoria whitfield here the world's first business reiki master founder of the visionary shaman circle which is a mastermind for global healing leaders in their industry it's a pleasure and an honor uh, we are currently at the filming and recording of this video we're in our seventh year um, wow. and 
masterminds incredible to get to see the shifts that we've created um, in the lives, the businesses, the families, um, clients we've impacted. If you want to get to know more about me, I am very easy to find. You can Google me, five star rated across all platforms. Come visit me on the Journeypreneur podcast. If you're into listening to podcasts, I'd be happy um, to receive you there. We have over a hundred and something episodes and there's more being uploaded every every month. Um, or if you want to con contact me directly, you can go to victoriawhitfield.com and follow the information there to come find me. Yeah, fantastic. And as you can tell, uh, you know, Victoria is doing great work and um, is passionate about the work she's doing. And hey, listen, I think after the year that everybody's been through, uh, you know, reevaluating things is always a good thing to do anyway, but I think now is probably the greatest opportunity you're ever going to get is to reevaluate all aspects of your life. And maybe it's the time to nurture that visionary, finally conquer the anti-visionary, nurture that visionary and work with somebody like Victoria to help you through that process. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. Yeah, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.